Raphael Bombelli was born in January of 1526 in Bologna, Papal States, which is now Italy. He was born to Antonio Mozzoli, who was a wool merchant, and Diamante Sudieri, a tailor's daughter. The Mazzoli family was once quite powerful in Bologna. The Bentevolo family ruled over Bologna from 1443. Sante Bevolo was Signor of Bologna for this year, and was succeeded by Giovanni Bentevolo II, who improved the city of Bologna itself, in particular developing its waterways. The Mazzoli family were avid supporters of the Bentevolo family, but their fortunes changed when Pope Julius II came into power in 1506, and he exiled the ruling family of the Benton Bolos. In an attempt to retake Bologna in 1508, the family, as well as Antonio Mozzoli's grandfather and several other supporters, staged a coup, but they were defeated and were later executed. Thereafter, the Mazzoli family suffered for many years, such as having their property confiscated, Though some time later, it was returned to Antonio Mazzoli. Antonio Mazzoli was able to return to Bologna and live there, after changing his surname to Bombelli in an effort to escape the reputation of the Mazzoli family. There he carried on his trade as a wool merchant and married Diamante Sudieri. Raphael Bombelli was the oldest of six children. He received no formal college education but was instead taught by an engineer architect by the name of Pierre Francesco Clemente. Bombelli soon found himself a patron in Alessandro Ruffini, who was a Roman noble, and who later became the Bishop of Mothi. It is still unclear how exactly Raphael learned of the leading mathematical works of his time, but he did live in the correct part of Italy, in which he would be involved in the major centers surrounding the solution of cubic and quadratic equations. Scipione de Ferro, who was the first to solve the cubic equation, was a professor at Bologna, Raphael's hometown. But de Ferro died a year before Raphael Bambelli was born. The contest between Fiore and Tartaglia took place in 1535 when Raphael was just nine years old, and Cardan's major work on the topic of Horus Magna was published in 1545. It is clear that Raphael studied Cardan's work, and he also followed the very public arguments between Cardan, Ferrari, and Tartaglia, which later accumulated in the contest between Ferrari and Tartaglia in Milan in 1548. From about 1548, Pierre Francesco Clemente, who was Raphael Bombelli's teacher, worked for the Apostolic Camera, which was a specialized apartment of the papacy in Rome set up to deal with legal and financial matters. The Apostolic Cabra employed Clemente to reclaim marshes near Fulgino on the Topino River, southeast of Perugia, in central Italy. This region became part of the Papal States in 1439. Though it is possible that Raphael assisted his teacher with this project, there is no direct evidence that this was indeed the case. In 1549, Alessandro Ruffini, Raphael's patron, acquired the rights to reclaim the marches of the Val de Chiana, which belonged to the Papal States. By 1551, Raphael was in the Val de Chiana, recording the boundaries to the land that was to be reclaimed. He worked on this project until 1555, when there was an interruption in the reclamation work. While Raphael was waiting for the Val de Chiana project to recommence, he decided to write a book on the subject of algebra, a subject in which he had been studying. Raphael felt that none of the current works on algebra that had been done by the leading mathematicians of his day really provided a careful and thorough exposition of the subject. Instead of writing a long and difficult formula that only skilled mathematicians could comprehend, Raphael decided that he would write a book on algebra that anyone would be able to understand. He wanted his text to be self-contained, and most of all, easy to read by those without a higher education. He wrote in the preface of his book, I began by reviewing the majority of those authors who have written on algebra up to the present in order to be able to serve instead of them on the matter, since there are a great many of them. On one of his visits to Rome, he made an exciting mathematical discovery. Antonio Maria Pazzi, who taught mathematics at the University of Rome, showed Raphael a manuscript of Diofonte's Arithmetica, 
and, after examining it, the two men decided to make a translation. Raphael wrote in his book, We, in order to enrich the world with a work so finely made, decided to translate it, and we have translated five of the books, there being seven in all. The remainder we were not able to finish because of pressure of work on one or other. Now he was more determined than ever. In his book that he finished in around 1569, which was simply entitled Algebra, Raphael Bombelli gave a detailed and comprehensive account of all the algebra known at the time. He was the first person to write and explain how to perform calculations with negative numbers. As he had intended it, Raphael Bombelli used simple language so that anybody could understand it. Yet, at the same time, he was still very thorough. Perhaps even more important than his work with algebra, however, the book also included Raphael's monumental information on the complex number theory. Before writing about complex numbers, he pointed out that the current solutions of equations of the form seen here. This was another way of stating that the discriminant of the cubic is negative. The solution of such an equation requires taking the cube root of some number and adding the square root of some negative number. Before diving into the use of imaginary numbers practically, Raphael went into a detailed explanation of the properties of complex numbers. Quickly, he made it clear that the rules of arithmetic for imaginary numbers are not the same for real numbers. That in itself was a big accomplishment, as even the mathematicians of his time were extremely confused about this very subject. Raphael attempted to avoid any confusion by giving a special name to square roots of negative numbers, instead of just trying to deal with them later as regular radicals, like most other mathematicians did at the time. This made it clear that these numbers were neither positive nor negative. This type of system had avoided the confusion that Euler encountered. Raphael called the imaginary number i plus a minus, or for negative i, minus of minus. The ingenious Raphael had the foresight to see that imaginary numbers were very important and wholly necessary to solving quartic and cubic equations. At the time, people thought of complex numbers only as tools for solving practical equations, not because of how important complex numbers really were. Raphael was able to get solutions using Scipione de Ferro's rule, even in the irreducible case, where other mathematicians such as Cardano had all but given up. Raphael Bombelli died at the age of 42 in the year 1572 in Rome, Italy, after being crushed by a large calf. Throughout his relatively short life, he was able to achieve a great many things, and was later highly respected in the mathematician community. He is generally regarded as the inventor of complex numbers, as no one before him had made rules for dealing with such numbers, and no one believed that even working with imaginary numbers would have useful results. Upon his reading of Raphael's book, Leibniz praised Raphael Bombelli as an outstanding master of analytical art. Crossley wrote in his book, Thus we have an engineer, Bombelli, making practical use of complex numbers, perhaps because they gave him useful results, while Cardan found the square roots of negative numbers useless. Bombelli is the first to give a treatment of any complex numbers. It is remarkable how thorough he is in his presentation of the laws of calculations of complex numbers. In honor of his accomplishments, a moon crater was named after Bombelli. Truly a visionary of his mathematical subjects, Raphael Bombelli explained difficult calculations of math in ways that anyone could understand it. For years, he inspired more and more mathematicians to aspire to greatness, to explore the deep and ever-expanding world of math. Raphael himself changed the face of the many subjects that he so eagerly studied, and with him, we have a better and deeper understanding. No doubt, for many years more, his legacy will continue to impress and amaze those who lose themselves in imaginary numbers, square roots, and other such functions. He will be forever remembered and thanked by the mathematical community. I think you will agree that he was truly a genius of his time.